talk to you about MBA ROI because I, I, I don't think any other course they talk about ROI. Only when it comes to MBA, everyone is worried for their ROI and what ROI is all included and everything. We will talk about those things. But sir, I want to hijack the event first to talk about the CMAT dates. Any inside information? Kuch aapko under ki news malum hai ke CMAT ko lege kya ho hai, kab aane wali dates? See, all these years CMAT exam dates are generally announced by mid of February. Uh, this time we are in the month of March, despite the fact we had one extra day in February. So the announcement has not come yet. But whatever information we have from some reliable sources, it seems like it's going to happen slightly late this year, maybe end April, first week of May, something of that sort. But it's very much there. It's going to happen. And uh, as we have been uh, kind of promoting all these time in various uh, events and various creatives, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that along with the CAT, ZAT, and GMAT, the candidates who are appearing for CMAT are also eligible to apply I for have... IMT Nagpur. IMT Nagpur has been accepting CMAT score for all these years, and this year also. We are going to accept CMAT score. So it's Excellent. very much there. However, uh, if I just uh, make it clear to candidates who are like still in two minds, etc. Our application is closing on 5th of March. Okay. And you all need to apply before that because after 5th of March, we will not be accepting any more application to our PGDM programs. So what happens is then since the exam has not taken place and you definitely therefore, to state the obvious, you don't have the score, CMAT score with you, you will not be kind of part of the PI process that happens immediately. You'll have to wait till the time your CMAT scores are made available to you. And once the scores are uploaded on our uh, ERP portal, etc., wherever you are applying, or through which whatever you are applying, we will invite you for the personal interview and critical thinking test process. Right. So my right. advice and suggestion is that whether you are uh, kind of in two minds or not about CMAT, etc. You must apply before 5th of March, which is our final deadline for the second phase of the CTPI process. Correct. So, so let me just summarize this. So student have to 5th of March is the last day to apply. The form will not be extend, extended irrespective of the CMAT dates. Fine. But up, up the score can be uploaded the score once you get a good percentile and there's a cutoff as well. So I don't know the cutoff of this year, but I think it typically 90 percentile plus is a good score. Yes. Good score with yes. I, the I, yes, I agree with you that for the last two to three years, the cutoff <laughs> has been 90 percentile and above. And this year, it's very likely to remain the same. Correct. So those who want to apply for IMT Nagpur, they have to apply now and upload your scores afterward. Okay, so you have to so provision because the exam is now late. So that's number one. Sir, coming back to the ROI. Sir, what do you mean by ROI? So normally a lot of B schools, they do, they only talk about the academic uh, course fees. Fine. I don't want to name the colleges. Our college fees are 25 lakh, but that's only the tuition fees. They don't include the overhead so yes. if i just okay. add the overheads what exactly is coming in terms of the fee structure or my cost for mba hmm. so see uh if you uh check our website and all our communication regarding the program expense etc we always mention the overall expense and not just the academic fees so if you see it is 15 lakhs that's mentioned as the fees for the program it includes your academic fees it includes your hostel your food right food is uh, 
all the meals come uh, breakfast and the uh, evening snacks etc it also includes your expenses of hostel stay as i have said textbook it also includes your uh, alumni fees joining fees in fact some amount is also a refundable caution money so once you are paying 15 lakhs the only expense that you may have to kind of incur during two years of your stay in the campus would be some of your very basic personal expenses maybe the cost of haircut or something of that sort beyond that there is not at all a single paisa that you need to spend apart from the basic necessities so therefore when you do the calculation of roi for imt nagpur please keep this in mind that you are not doing a calculation only against your fee uh, academic fees but against your entire expenses once you pay your entire fees and all you will get to know what is the breakup so you would see that your roi is actually much higher if you are considering your expense only for the tuition fees correct 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 and sir one thing i want to add normally one thing normally which a lot of students miss is the opportunity cost that if you could have been working in the industry so you would have been earning some amount of money so wo bhi aap ek factor leke chalo ki that's why always recommend join a good college so so that you are at least not repenting that ki jo apne 2 saal aap job kar sakte the that you have wasted those 2 years and do you understand not obviously wasted it's like invested 2 years but utna acha quality hona ch chahiye so that's always i recommend that so sir when it come to i am to nagpur i always uh, say that it's one of the best roi so when it come to the best roi the first thing which my come to my mind is scholarship that anyone who is scoring good in cat exam is getting a scholarship and the girls also having a, a scholarship every girl who apply for imt uh, nagpur is having a scholarship of 25% i think so sir uh, can you put some light IMT, on imt imt nagpur the uh, scholarship for all female student is 20% of 20%. the academic fees and if i give you roughly what it translate into it's somewhere around 2 lakh 10000 to 2 lakh 20000 it translate into that it's more than 2 lakh rupees so effectively for all the girl student the expense as far as education is concerned is not 15 but 15 minus that 2 lakh 10000 2 lakh 20000 or whatever it turns out to be so for girls therefore it's definitely a major major improvement on their roi if i continue with your description of how the roi is calculated and all this thing because the expense is 2 lakh rupees less for them and it not just scholarship for female student which is there for everyone and uh, i would like to share with you that this exp uh, this scholarship is not subject to any condition so we are not saying that female candidates whose family income is below x amount or female candidates who would get certain x percentile no condition attached no string attached if you are a female candidate you are going to get that 20% uh, scholarship in the academic fees apart from that if you are a meritorious candidate in a sense you have scored more than 90 percentile in cat and zat and more than 650 in gmat you will get a handsome and a very generous scholarship of 40% of the academic fees which translate into more than 4 lakh rupees right so for them the cost of education goes almost as low as 11 lakh rupees so now a pgdm degree which is mba equivalent because we are aiu uh, kind of uh, or institute which has granted us the equivalence of mba so if you consider in today's time and era a two year program coming at a cost of 11 lakhs or maybe 13 lakhs including your stay and food and all i think there are many ordinary schools even where the fees would be much higher 
right? So right. the fees are effectively very, very low here. And not just in the first year, the students who do well in the first year of the program, who will score very high in certain subjects, will top their uh, respective program and all. In the second year, they will be provided with another set of merit scholarship. And that can run into, if you are a very good student, you have uh, got highest score in many subjects and all, that again can run into more than a lakh rupees for you. So if that's the case, you join with a 90 percentile and all, and then you do well, your cost of education goes as low as 9 lakh rupees maybe. Correct, right? correct. So in that case, the ROI is many percentage higher than many of the B schools that are talking a lot about their ROI, etc. We, we are we do that. not in the league. We don't get into those kind of competition. But these are some of the facts I feel to you, the students should know that here the cost of getting a PGDA diploma, which is equivalent to MBA, is extremely low considering the quality, the exposure and the career we are ensuring to each one of them. Correct, correct, correct. So I know we are supposed to pick up the chats in the end, but there are a couple of very uh, relevant questions I can mm -hmm. see the chat so I'll pick them up. Uh, uh -huh. Web, Web is asking that 20 per scholarship is available on 15 lakhs. So yes, sir, I've just clarified that. Ki yes, that 20 it, It's off. not on 15 lakhs. Uh, let me just clarify. It's on tuition fee. Tuition fee, sorry. Which, which, which is somewhere around 10 to 11 lakhs. I'm, I'm not too sure about it. Okay. Right? So it translates into more than uh, 2 lakh rupees. Correct. So uh, you uh, can actually, do that. It's uh -huh. not 3 lakh rupees. It's two lakh ten thousand or something of that sort. Correct, correct, correct. So, uh, jitna meko malum hai ki dao your lump sum total fees become around twelve lakhs for a girl. Yes, definitely, including and everything. Including yes. everything, right? Uh, Harshal is having a question that scholarship is there a scholarship available for economically backward students? Oh yes, that I was not talking about because I thought that it's a mandate by the AICT and all b schools are doing it so it does not require any additional mention but it's we there it's we there have it 100 percent tuition fee waiver so for that kind of student the total cost of education is barely two to three lakh rupees i suppose but that is a ugc mandate uh, aict mandate sorry correct, AICT correct. mandate and last year i think uh, more than nine students from our institute were granted this and we are open to uh, granting this uh, scholarship up to 5% of our intake, which would be somewhere around uh, 17, 18 students. We, we are open to that. Last year, we gave it to nine because the others were not meeting the requirement. But we are open to that. I did not mention it because it's it's there. It's it's already there, right? In all B-School, it's there. Yes. Correct, correct. Uh, Pranith have a, a very interesting question. She got 96 percentile in CAT exam and mm -hmm. she can't pay 3.3500 3, for the application form. So is there any kind of application waiver available for her? So my advice to her is you, if you're already 96, you're getting lakhs of scholarship. Yeah, you think about 3500. See, uh, I understand that some of us may have some uh, sort of financial constraint, etc. So probably this is also a good time to tell you that unlike many other private B schools where they insist on one single payment of the entire fees, we take the fees trimester wise. So we would not like to burden you with a huge amount of uh, fees at one go. So you pay 15 lakhs on the very first day of the uh, program you join like this. No, it is split over uh, three plus three, six trimester, right? And <clears throat> those who have some sort of financial issues, even in that small amount to be paid in installment, we have tie-ups with various banks, including, <clears throat> sorry, some of the PSUs where you get a loan just by producing your admission letter. And within few working days, 
the loan is approved and you can uh, get it deposited in your bank account. So we try all the possible ways to help out our meritorious students and all our students because objective is not to extract money from you, but to ensure that you get a good quality education with minimal possible financial burden, right? So uh, this waiver in terms of fees and all, at this juncture, we have no way of kind of checking that who is a genuine candidate and who is not. And if we want to do that, please understand we have received more than 20,000 applications. So if we have to do this to cross check who can afford to pay the fees and who cannot, uh, it becomes operationally very difficult. So maybe at this juncture, Correct. we can't help. Correct. Correct. So there are a couple of more questions. We'll take them in the end. So the second no part of the scholarship, when we say the word ROI is uh, you are pro providing the hostel and the books at a reduced cost or free of cost, then the international tours are available for, they will not char yes. charging them for the admissions for that. And another online courses, which are kind of a must for MBA students today are available at a, at a very low cost. So what would you like only, to say about that? Uh, not only just online, we have uh, tie-ups with likes of IBM, right? With NSE, and we have uh, got some sort of arrangement with Bloomberg, all these big names in the industry who are offering some additional courses, certificate for which would be provided after completion of the course at almost zero cost, almost at a zero cost. And please understand in today's cutthroat competitive world, if in your CV along with the PGDM, uh, certificate and a program that you have completed if you produce a certificate that is being issued by ibm or you are a nsc certified course uh, holder or you are completing a course that is designed and implemented by bloomberg right you definitely stay ahead of the curve you would definitely stand out from the crowd and it can be hugely beneficial for not just your first job or placement, first placement, but throughout your career, it's going to be majorly helpful for you. So if you are looking at ROI, not just from the perspective of your first job, but your overall career growth and your future earning, they definitely add a lot to your return on investment sort of things, both in terms of time as well as money. Correct, correct. And then fees includes your uh, hostel and the books as well. Food and textbook, the fees to, to become a part of the alumni network and some refundable cautionary money. I guess that is 15,000 or so. So the course is not even 15 lakhs. You can get your 15,000 back unless and until you damage some property and your caution money is forfeited. <laughs> Great, great, great. So, yeah. So, anything. So, sir, uh, next question is 20,000 applicants. Uh, I've already applied from the uh, IMT Nagpur doing the common admission form. So, but mm -hmm. I've not received any update as of now for from IMT Nagpur. I got 72 percentile. So, will they get a call? So, Prabhat and Biraj, both of them have the same doubt. So, uh, in the second phase, we are going to take into consideration those candidates who have completed their forms but their pi process has not taken place so far right and uh, in this phase we will be focusing on people who have applied both through the common portal as well as uh, through imt nagpur portal right so maybe oh, you yeah. will uh, get a call if you qualify for the pi process once we start rolling out the PI letters, that we will do post 5th of March. Correct. So for CAT and ZAT, it will be coming now. But for CMAT, it will be coming after the CMAT result is out. Yes, because in this year, we have decided that we are not going to do any process for candidates who are without score. Because it till last year, we were doing it online. And online is much more uh, easy as far as the execution of the process is concerned. So even if it was uh, 18, 19,000, we could do it, right? But this time it's happening physically. 
Correct. So there is a lot of logistical issues that are involved and we definitely cannot conduct PI process for everyone who applies. We have to do it phase wise and we need to filter out some application. And correct, correct, correct. So next question from Kajal and, and I always love this kind of width of uh, doubts they have. She said you already have uh, given an interview. When will be the result announced? <laughs> so you can see the width. Uh, no, 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 no. That, that is a very genuine question. Correct, correct. I understand the anxiousness of people who have appeared and still not heard from us. See, the whole point is, uh, as far as my uh, limited knowledge goes, AICT has put certain restrictions in terms of fees payment. Okay, so uh, even if the uh, offer letter is sent, the candidates will not be allowed to pay the admission fees before I think first week of April or last week of March or something of that sort, right? So since we we cannot know who is going to accept the offer and who is not, we are not kind of uh, rolling out the admission offer just now. We will do it maybe third or fourth week of March. So another two or three weeks of suspense one has to be with. Correct. Correct. Uh, so, yeah, so we have kind of a covered up all the major points from my end. So if you want to add anything, any advice you'd like to give to students? Uh, one more thing, I guess uh, many of you may not have checked or have not inquired about is that what about the global or international exposure that a program offers? See, one of the parameters, I'm not saying just for IMT Nagpur, if you are considering any other B school, right, which you think could be an alternative to IMT Nagpur, please do a fact check about whether the institute offers any international student exchange. And why is that? It's not because you get to go abroad and stay in a, a different B school for a semester or a trimester, which is definitely there. But it also talks about the quality of the program that the B school offers. Because see, if I'm a European or an American B school, why would I get into a student exchange program with an institute whose academic standards are very low, right? That that kind of uh, damage my own brand and my own uh, institute's image. So the moment you see the way it is with IMT Nakhu, that we have some 25 international B schools with which we have internal student exchange and a faculty exchange program, MOU sign. It simply means that we are offering a program and the rigor and the standard of the program meets the international standard that a B schools in US and B schools in Europe, they feel that yes, if our students go there and spend about a semester or a trimester, they would learn as much as they would have if they were in our campus or in other way that the program that we offer and if we invite a student from IMT Nagpur to be part of this program for a semester or a trimester, that student would not struggle. Rather, that student would enrich our classroom experience because the students of IMT Nagpur are already exposed to high standards of academic and learning process, right? So this would be another advice for me to all the students who are still kind of deciding whether to apply or whether to take up the offer or whether to join a B school or not, that please do a fact check that along with some certification course, the way IMT Nakur offers with IBM and NSE, et cetera, whether the B school you are looking at is also a B school that has some sort of international student exchange program and faculty exchange program. Because these are what makes the institute and its program special, more internationally acceptable, and therefore gives you much more in your learning experience or learning journey than just a B school where you do your standard uh, marketing and finance and operation courses, and at the end of two years, get that certificate. And that's about it. 
there is nothing more you can talk about your in your learning experience or your learning journey right so keep that in mind that would be another advice possibly right. some of uh, our students who are there online could also be wondering about right great 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 thank you sir thank you very much for talking to My us pleasure. thank you so uh, students from imt nagpur if you have any question to add if you want to add something otherwise we are done i think uh, yes, sir, we are done Huh. Okay, done. Okay. That you yeah. have already kind of. Yeah, I'm. I'm so sorry. Already. I already hijacked the because uh -huh. I love to do this kind of a live chat because the students get bored. Okay, my no, question no. not being answered, so I love to do it as live as definitely, possible. Definitely, definitely. And I, I am here for another few minutes or so in case someone is still kind of framing the question or trying to figure out whether this is a relevant question or not. Or if there are any questions, you can see on the chat. Yeah, call. sir. There's one question which I've got just just now. I got. Uh -huh. You were yes. talking about hundred percent waiver. Is it only for the student through CAT or anyone who's getting through CMAT also can get into that? No, no, no. This this has nothing to do with what exam you are being selected through. It is to do with your family income. And I guess uh, as far as uh, our institute is in Maharashtra, so we go by Maharashtra's definition. If your annual family income is less than 8 lakh, you are eligible for such scholarship. It doesn't matter which exam you are applying to. So you, whether you are a CAT, ZAT or a CMAT or GMAT, if your family income is less than 8 lakh annually, uh, you will be eligible. But please make sure you understand the meaning of the term family income, not father's income. Right? Correct. All the members of the family, whosoever is staying with your family, everyone's income will pull together to calculate whether it exceeds 8 lakh or not, right? Correct. Sir, last question, one more question about from the CAT. Is there any uh, expected cutoff from CAT point of view so that at least I can have a PI call? CAT and that. As of now, uh, we are not really uh, finalizing on all these things. <clears throat> But if you go by historical trend for the last three, four years, anyone who is scoring above 72, 73 can expect a PI call. Yeah. But please understand this is a historical yes. average. Correct. That's an estimate. And it differs from year to year. Some years it goes to 72, some years it goes up to 76. It, it fluctuates, it varies. Correct. But yes, if you are 72 and above, it is fair to say that you will get a PI call. Correct, correct, correct. Sir, uh, Web, we have another very valid question. Sorry, I'm taking your time. Uh, no, how many I seats are know. there for CMAT? What if all the seats are filled by CAT and Z? <laughs> no, no, no. That's a good one. <laughs> we are not going to do that. And there is nothing like a certain number of seats for CMAT and certain for CAT and certain for Z. It's not like that. We have an overall scoring system. Right. So overall score is what matters. So if after we receive your score and your overall score, that is your PI, your past academic record, your test score, your uh, CT score, all these put together turns out to be higher than a person who is applying through CAT and ZAT will select you, will not have any biases against or in favor of any of the tests. All students who are appearing for the PI process through any of the four tests, they are all equally preferred by us. There is no discrimination. Great. Great. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very uh -huh. much for talking to us. It was awesome. It's always awesome talking to you. You always have to clarify all the doubts in detail. <laughs>